preventive medicine, this section is the most highly tested section on the entire examination because no matter what specialty you're going into, even if it's <coughs> surgery or psychiatry, you're expected to be practicing preventive medicine on all of your patients. In other words, if you're a psychiatrist and your depressed 30-year-old woman is coming to see you, you're expected to be referring as a psychiatrist that person for her pap smear. If you're a person who is an obstetrician and gynecologist, even though you know to do the pap smear, you're expected to know that at the age of 50, that person should be sent for colonoscopy. Even if you are a family practice doctor, no family practice doctors are very good at this, but you're any doctor that has a primary relationship with a patient and you have a person who's 55 and they've been a smoker for 30 pack years, you're expected to know to send them for that CT scan for screening for lung cancer. There is nothing more highly tested than preventive medicine because everybody's supposed to do it. Now, how many people are writing chemotherapy orders? 1%, 2%? How many people are doing heart lung transplants? One tenth of 1%? How many people are actually repairing the aneurysm? Almost nobody. But everybody's supposed to do preventive medicine and everybody's supposed to know, memo, memo, it's off to breast we go. It's two cold plates, it doesn't feel great. Memo, memo, memo is the best after the age of 50, is the single most effective cancer screening method that you should be doing mammography. If you have two first degree relatives who have breast cancer, a mother and a sister, two sisters, two mothers, mother and a sister, you might offer the person BRCA testing, you might offer them tamoxifen, raloxifen, tamoxifen, raloxifen, tamoxifen and raloxifen to prevent it results in a 50% decrease in the risk of breast cancer. But you're supposed to know that mammography above 50 is the single most effective cancer screening method. You have chemotherapy that you can offer as adjuvant chemotherapy if the lesion is above one centimeter or if you have positive lymph nodes. You have selective estrogen receptor modifiers that decrease the risk of cancer and metastasis. You have modified radical mastectomy and you have lunctectomy and radiation. You have trastuzumab. You have all of these things that lower mortality, and it's awesome. Mammography is awesome as a preventive screening measure. Now, why isn't cervical cancer as good? Why isn't cervical? Why isn't pap smear as good? Well, it's not that pap smear is not good. Pap smear is awesome. It's just... If you take a thousand women who are 50, you'll find a lot more breast cancer than you will cervical cancer. There's 200 to 250,000 cases a year of breast cancer. There's less than 10,000 cases a year of cervical cancer. If you screen a million 18-year-olds, you find one cervical cancer, and you're not even sure you can do anything about it. Why do you think pap smears were changed so that you're going from the age of 21 to 65? So I was once on a radio show, and the woman was talking about her sister who had cervical cancer at 20. And it was truly, truly, truly a one in a million case. And she couldn't understand why everybody shouldn't get a pap smear every year past the age of 12. And she didn't understand that you might be able to find that cancer, although frankly, you'd have to go papping millions of people. And she couldn't understand that when you find an abnormal pap smear, the colposcopic biopsy, results in bleeding and infection. Is there a benefit? Age of sexual activity? Turns out not to matter. And it's gonna matter less. It's gonna matter less for two reasons. First of all, the average age of sexual activity, is it starting younger or older than it used to be? The average age of sexual activity is becoming older than it used to be. It's hard for people to relate to. Yeah, the world is sort of reconservatizing. 
the average age of sexual activity is older, and papillomavirus is going to become less because now you're going to start finding people who had papillomavirus vaccine when they were 12 and 13 and 14. And the age of 18 and 20, that's how old they are now. They don't have the pathogenic HPVs. So from the age of 21 to 65, it's every three years. However, from 30 to 65, it's every five years if you add in HPV testing. Every five years with HPV testing. And that is also because if you have atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance, atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance, and I know that I've said this in other sections, I'm saying it again because preventive medicine is so highly tested, so important, so critical, that I think it's worth saying twice. With HPV testing, you should get the colposcopy, but without HPV testing, without HPV, you don't need to do the colposcopic biopsy, you could just pap again in six to 12 months. A cervical cancer screening. Later, sexual activity doesn't matter. If you've had a hysterectomy, stop doing it. Colon cancer screening. Colon cancer screening should start above the age of 50 and it should be colonoscopy every 10 years. Now, even though you might be able to do sigmoidoscopy, sigmoidoscopy will miss 40% of cancers that are proximal to the sigmoid colon. Stool guaiac will miss cancers, and even if it's positive, you have to do colposcopy anyway. Virtual colonoscopy with CT scan is terrible. Virtual colonoscopy with CT scan is a crappy, crappy, crappy test. Barium enema would be done if there was a false negative rate. Now, what if you had one relative who had colon cancer? You start at the age of 40 or 10 years earlier, whichever is earlier, and do colonoscopy every 10 years. This is the standard for screening for colon cancer. Above the age of 50, colonoscopy is best. Stool guaiac, sigmoidoscopy, barium, enemas, crappy, 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 and virtual colonoscopy. PCR is for DNA, cancer DNA, not worked out, not worked out. Wrong, 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 wrong. I'm telling you, your test is not gonna play a game with doing experimental things. You think, you imagine because of your anxiety, because of your anxiety, you think they're gonna put you into this unanswerable question where they're gonna give you some experimental test that's not been proven. I'm telling you that's not what goes on. I'm telling you that's not what happens here. They're gonna ask you definite, definite things. Like the same way they're going to ask you that you found a polyp on that test. A polyp on that test means that you repeat at three to five years. Now, yes, this was in the GI section, but it's so important. I want you to know it again because it's so important. It's not a long section. 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 It's not a long section to say lung cancer should be done from the age of 55 to 80 for people who smoke 30 pack years. People who smoke 30 pack years and they should get a CT scan, a low dose CT scan every year or two. It's not that hard a question to say prostate cancer screening. There is no prostate cancer screening. PSA should not be offered. PSA is a crappy test. But PSA is unique because if the person says, I understand the risks of the test and the benefits. I understand it doesn't lower my mortality. I understand that a positive PSA means I need a, a prostate biopsy. I understand that a, pro, a negative PSA does not exclude prostate cancer. I understand that a PSA can miss stage A1 cancer. I understand that PSA does not lower mortality. I still want it anyway. Who are these people? Me. I've had it done twice. <laughs> 
I've had it done twice. I just like it being normal. I like it. It relaxes me. <laughs> relaxes me. I just like it being normal. But then again, I've had my tetanus shot done every like three years. I've had my MMDAR. I, 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 I like vaccinations. I like screening. You know, I'm a screening, uh, screening aficionado. Mammography above 50. 40 to 50 is not clear. Cervical cancer, 21 to 65. If you've had hysterectomy, stop it. Between the age of 30 and 65, every five years. Colon cancer screening, colonoscopy above 50. Stool guaiac and barium enema and sigmoidoscopy is not as good. If you had one relative, you start age 40 or 10 years earlier, whichever is earlier. So that even means if grandma had colon cancer at the age of 752, you still start at the age of 40. If you've had a polyp, you repeat the screening at three to five years afterwards. Lung cancer screening, this is new in the last couple of years. Big smoking histories, do a slow dose CT scan every year or two at the age of 55 to 80. Hey, listen, I don't agree with it, but it's the answer, it's the answer. Prostate scanning, prostate screening, PSA is crappy, and everything else is worthless. Ovarian cancer screening, Pelvic sonograms, pelvic exams, no. Screening chest x-rays, no. Screening stress tests, no, no. Screening stress tests, screening chest x-rays, no, no, and no. See you soon.